We've only watched one episode of Chicago Med in the past, but there's some extreme episodes we're about to watch. Huge thanks to Arab for sponsoring this video. Let's get started. You concur? Atrial septal defect, but you feel it's an emergency? Well, the patient's already anesthetized. Atrial septal defect is a defect within the upper two chambers of the heart. Remember, the heart is made up of four chambers, ventricles on the bottom, atrium on the top. And if there's a defect in the wall that separates the two atria, that's called an ASD. Why am I looking at that camera? I'm looking at the wrong <laughs> camera the whole time. If you have circulation returning a clot back into the right side of the heart, it can then, instead of shooting into the lungs, which obviously would be a problem via pulmonary embolism, it could go from the right atria to the left atria, and then from the left atria go into the left ventricle and get shot out into the systemic portion of the blood flow instead of the lungs, so it bypasses the lungs and ends up in the brain causing a stroke, a blockage, and that's obviously incredibly detrimental. This is Mr. Shea from the Chinese Embassy. Dr. Rhodes. Mr. Woodfield, the director of the Chicago Zoo. Doctor. And the chief veterinarian, Why are there Dr. Zoo Evans. Animals? Uh, zoo? Your patient. Is a gorilla? Meet Zoo Lin. A panda! They literally are just making sh up as they go now. So this was your idea. Dr. Choi volunteers at the zoo. Okay, that's great. But you know what is even more interesting? When a real patient, actually a real patient, when a human patient needs surgery and the doctor is busy with the panda, good luck explaining it to the patient's family. You see, we know your husband's heart problem's complicated, but panda. He's a panda. You're a panda. You see, Miss Cheney, your heart, uh, husband's heart problem's complicating. That's an Eminem lyric. Well, that's fine, but I'm not a veterinarian. She needs a cardiothoracic surgeon. You've done this procedure many times. No, he has not on it. It's a different species. They didn't even give him like something similar. Like is a panda even remotely similar to a human? I guess I would have to uh, take her up to the cath lab and Close the defect with a balloon. This is done in humans. A cath lab is a catheterization lab. It's where you go from peripheral blood vessels, either in the arms or in the femoral area, and you gauge up a wire. You gauge a catheter, which is basically like a little mini hose over a wire, and that catheter can have some tools on it, like a balloon. You can open up blood vessels. You could put stents in, et cetera, et cetera. But to do this on an animal and a species that you've never done it on before, I think that's just ridiculous. Are we sure that we're all comfortable spending our time and the hospital's resources to save an animal. Dr. Rhodes, zoos rent pandas from the Chinese government for a million dollars a year. Why? Because people love pandas. <laughs> How is that an explanation? If we save this one, it's a public relations coup for this hospital, one which will lead to much needed donations to save human lives. I had a struggle with my hospital getting behind the public relations of supporting a doctor who's doing well on social media. And this hospital's willing to support operating on a panda for a PR story. I've learned that there are less than 2,000 pandas left in the world. So get a panda surgeon, not even a vet. Don't go to the, the vet that treats cats and dogs. Go to the vet that operates on hearts of pandas. I think you're a little posterior. How's it looking fluoro? The fluoro is basically a real-time uh, radiologic device that allows you to see certain blood vessels, especially if you're in injecting dye. Hold on, hurry, Spikey. I can't continue if she says tachycardic. How do you know what is tachycardic even for a panda? Like if you ask me right now, what is a fast heart rate for a panda? I'm making it up if I tell you. Give her six milligrams of adenosine on its way. They're gonna stop the panda's heart? No pulse, heart's arrested. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to do for humans. She's gonna come back, right? Humans do. <laughs> but this is the first time that I've given adenosine to a panda. <laughs> Okay, I don't know why I'm entertained by this. Got a pulse. See, this story would become cooler if they just started having the panda go crazy and turn into a superhuman because they gave it like atropine and atropine side effect on pandas. It makes them like really strong and resistant to uh, sedating agents. That would be cool. She has an effusion around the heart. Yeah, low pressure bleed. 
Damn, I must have nicked the right atrial appendage during the occlusion. Basically what they're saying is the panda's bleeding into the... Why do I know about panda heart anatomy? I'm assuming there, it's similar to the human heart. There's a pericardium that covers the heart. It's the lining that covers the organ. And if you have a slow bleed, it can leak into that area, which actually becomes problematic because if it leaks long enough, you can have cardiac tamponade where the heart can't even expand fully and just a pressure essentially chokes the heart out. We've got to relieve the pressure. And we shouldn't open her up. No, can't risk the blood loss. No. We're gonna do a pericardiosynthesis. Okay, I'll needle her, put in a drain, and hopefully the bleed will stop on its own. Give me the Paravac kit. Yes, doctor. Paravac. See, I could be a panda doctor too. Blood has stopped draining. Uh, BP and heart rate have normalized. We've dialed back on the sedation, see how she responds. How she responds? She's gonna wake up and kill all of you. Pandas are ruthless. She's coming around. All right. The writers have to be on strike when this episode was written. Back to the show in just a second, but first I wanna to talk to you about AirUp scented water that has made my hydration fun and easy. It's actually pretty cool, take a look. An AirUp bottle turns everyday water into a delicious drink thanks to their scent pods. The pod releases a scent that adds flavor to your water all without any sugar, calories, or additive junk. Personally, I like the blueberry flavor as well as how clutch it's been when I'm flying. I recently went out to LA to record a bunch of podcast episodes and was so happy I could bring my air up bottle through security, fill it up at a water fountain, and stay hydrated on my cross country flight without any added stress or added duty free shop costs. Look, if you've ever flown and you know how dry the recycled air can get, but with air up, I'm enjoying the process of staying hydrated throughout my entire flight, which helps keep my mucous membranes moist and my skin feeling soft. So visit the link in my description, use code Dr. Mike. Remember, doctor is spelled out and has a space to get 15% off your order and smell the delicious water. All right, let's get back to the video. Good morning. I'm Dr. Choi. You must be Dennis. The one and only. And uh, this is my girlfriend and partner, Aviva. Say hi to Dr. Choi, you guys. We don't allow recording in hospitals like this, mostly because it also records other patients in the area, and that's HIPAA. We're live in front of 800,000 people. What's your the judge.com? Mind taking a seat so I can examine you? Well, I don't know. Can I take a seat? I'm not following. Not you, Dr. Shore. He's talking to our followers. They're voting. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Okay, that's not good because A, if you're trying to do a proper abdominal exam, the abdominal muscles are gonna be tightened up because the person's standing, therefore you're not gonna be able to palpate the organs properly, so. It's in the name. You are the judge.com. Our followers vote on all of Dennis's decisions. Look, if you won't let me treat you properly, you should see another doctor. I don't mean any disrespect, Doc. Please don't send me back to the waiting room. My stomach is killing me. See, like, this is all illegal because you're filming other patients. Abdominal pain. Yeah, it's definitely food poisoning. And they made me eat a ton of discount sushi last night. Ow! You don't perform abdominal exam. Eh. Eh, like you're giving a low five to someone behind their back. You're warm and your belly's obviously tender. I'd like to get a CT scan to rule out anything serious. I'll be back. I will say that is really accurate. A lot of ER doctors are like, oh, you're warm and your belly's a little sore. Here's a CT scan. I'm like, can we like investigate a little bit more? Maybe do some special tests? Turns out you didn't have food poisoning. You have appendicitis. I told you guys this pain was real. Ow. Luckily we caught it in time. Uh. We can get you up to an operating room to remove it before it bursts. At Moo Butters asking, is there an alternative to surgery? Yeah, you can give IV antibiotics, but depending on how bad it is, waiting could be bad or it could be okay. In some cases, it can be managed with antibiotics, but surgery is the standard. Surgery is a no-go. <laughs> it's a serious medical decision. So can they be held can liable for murder? And make it for you. If your appendix ruptures, there's a good chance you'll die. I'm sorry. The decision's been made. We're going with the antibiotics. Doris, order one gram Ceph triaxone and 500 milligrams flagell from a patient in four. For most uh, intra-abdominal infections, we go ciproflagell, not Ceph triaxone flagell. I wonder why he did Ceph triaxone. Boy, he showed me your website. It's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. His name tag legit says chief of psychiatry. I'm gonna get thrown in the loony bin if y'all keep punking me with these votes. So Dr. Choi and I just wanna make sure you understand that by opting out of the surgery, that you are putting your life in danger. This is the team trying to understand if he's capable of giving consent. 
to see if he understands consequences of actions, what he's saying no to, what he's saying yes to. And if someone cannot give consent because they're out of their right state of mind, you can have someone recommend treatments for them, either a family member or the doctor in charge. He clearly understands the decision he's making. Yeah, but he's not making the decision. True, but he's willingly allowing other people to do that for him. He's denying surgery to boost his online following. How can we say he doesn't pose a risk to himself? Just because he's reckless doesn't mean he's suicidal. It's an acceptable level of risk, uh, patient autonomy. That's it. Hmm? If the antibiotics don't take, we just watch him die. No, if he gets really sick, maybe he could change his mind and then go for surgery. It won't be a, a better surgery. In fact, surgery that is more emergent actually is much more dangerous, which is why in some cases, if the appendicitis is quite mild, we treat with the IV antibiotics, let it calm down inflammation-wise, and then do an elective appendectomy. What's happening to him? <sighs> Ultrasound. I'm gonna guess it perforated. All right, your appendix is nearly perforated. We need to get you into surgery now. Babe. It won't take long until your appendix no. bursts. When that happens, it may be too late to save you. Group chat saying you should put him on a medicine called Cialis. Cialis is an erection medication. Actually, Cialis is also used for BPH, uh, large prostate. What are we doing up here? I figured out how we can double your followers in an instant. <laughs> I don't think you get how this works. It took us over a year to get to a million. I think I know exactly how this works. He's gonna say, should we throw him off the ledge? And they vote, and they say yes, and then he doesn't want to do it. And then they say, oh, so you want the surgery. Slow down, egghead. I want you to ask your followers a very simple question. Should you jump off this roof right now? Oh, because if he says yes, that he's suicidal, then they can sch schedule aid him or whatever it's called and keep him uh, and like do the medical treatment. You said your followers love you, right? They don't want to see anything bad happen to Dennis. You had nothing to worry about. Good strategy, psychiatrist. He's suicidal, we have to treat him. How's he doing? The appendectomy went well. Yay. The surgeon expects him to make a full recovery. Most la uh, appendectomies are done laparoscopically, which means they're minimally invasive. So they kind of put a few small holes inside your body in order to put the tools in that they need, including a camera. And then they just either glue up or sew up the holes and you're good to go. We do have you sign a release though when you're going for surgery that it may become open depending on if there's a complication, at which point we do need to create a surgical opening. Okay, Shep, I'm Dr. Choi. What brings you in today? About six weeks ago, I was diagnosed with GBM. It's a terminal. terminal brain cancer. Glioblastoma multiforme. GBM is a very fast growing and it's one of the more common brain cancers. And what's unfortunate about it is the prognosis is very poor. It actually stems from these specific cells in, in your brain called astrocytes. And these are nerve supporting cells. It can cause problems uh, mostly due to mass effect because it starts putting on pressure on different areas of your brain, actually even pulling away blood circulation and bringing circulation to itself. Surgery, radiation, chemo, all options obviously, depending where it is in your brain. But even if you do treat it, uh, the recurrence rate is quite high. The phone call I just made was to a company called CCI. They're gonna preserve me until a cure can be found for my condition. They're on their way here now. To freeze you? It's called vitrification, but <laughs> yeah. You understand you have to be declared dead first. The cocktail I've been drinking contains amitriptyline, lorazepam, and 200 milligrams of amphetamines. Which put me to sleep in a little over an hour and rest my heart sufficiently for you to declare me dead in about five. Why did he smell it as if any of those things have a scent to them? Doris, come here, we gotta pump his stomach. Stop! I refuse treatment! Don't listen to Doris. Give me two. This doctor keeps touching me! If you're suicidal, you cannot refuse. Have you had a chance to review Mr. Shepard's medical record, Sam? Yeah, he's terminal. I, mean, I could go in and do a resection and aggressively radiate, but it'd, it'd buy him 12 to 15 months tops. So he should be on hospice. Well, where are we with cryonic, Sam? I mean, is it possible to freeze the brain? No. Yeah, sort of, but that's the easy part. Hard part's thawing it out again and having it still work. And Exactly. What they are testing actually right now with NASA, right now one of the biggest problems when you send astronauts to space is that they require room to move, extra nutrients because they're awake and moving around. But if you can, cause them essentially to hibernate for like 14 days. That might make it easier on them, less expensive, less room on the space shuttle, and therefore make it more reasonable to send astronauts into space. The way they're doing this is by trying to create a hibernation process by rapidly cooling people's bodies. We do something like this actually in the medical arena where someone has a cardiac arrest and their heart stops. We actually do therapeutic cooling of a patient in order to decrease that metabolic demand, therefore buying them time and potentially decreasing damage from their cardiac arrest or their heart failing and not being able to circulate blood. The hospital across the street could cure me. 
Wouldn't you feel ethically compelled to send me there for treatment? I would. Well, that's what I'm doing. Sending myself to a better hospital. Only the hospital I'm going to is in the future. Finding somebody doesn't have the capacity to make an informed decision, I mean, it's, it's a high hurdle. He's committing suicide. He's a danger to himself by definition. Just put him on a cycle. Yeah, but if you follow his logic, he's, he's not committing suicide. <laughs> but why are you following a person who's trying to commit suicide's logic? With the amount of medicines he took, there's no way he's sitting up and talking and being normal. Like, he's just taken way too many psychoactive substances to be calm and fine and normal and rational, just not realistic. And withdrawing support. My wife and I decided we're going to honor our son's wishes. This way, maybe someday we'll get our son back. What is that? Is that the thing that does chest compressions? They probably just said what device looks cool and they threw it on. That literally looks like that device that does chest compressions for you. I forgot what it's called. Mr. Patrick. I assure you we did everything we could. She couldn't breathe. Do you know what that's like? I want you to know how it feels. This is your Mr. Patrick! There's a toxic spill. Evacuate the ED now! Come on! So in hospitals, we have different color codes for different situations. For example, code blue means someone's heart stopped. Code red usually means fire. Code black, terrorist emergency. Each hospital kind of has their own. And on the back of our ID badges, we actually have all the codes written in case we forget. So they're always handy. This is Maggie Lockwood, toxic exposure to ED. I repeat, toxic exposure to ED. I don't know why they don't all put on N95 respirators because we genuinely have those and those don't allow particles in for most substances that could be harmful. What are you doing? This room has positive pressure ventilation. Oh. We're safe as long as we stay in here. That's true. We actually use a lot of those rooms with COVID. This pressure's dropping. Derek, are you feeling dizzy? A little. What does that mean? That means you're still bleeding. Oh no. A tear in your spleen isn't clotting like I'd hoped. A tear in the spleen is really problematic because it can cause a lot of bleeding. And if you lose your spleen, that puts you at a really high risk for certain infections, specifically bacterial infections with encapsulated bacteria. That's why when someone is about to go for a splenectomy or a spleen removal, generally before we try to get them vaccinated, if not, if it's an emergency, we do it after. We even have a strong protocol in place for individuals who are considered high risk to take antibiotics daily as a preventive, or to make sure that everyone who doesn't have a spleen has antibiotics at the ready, so that if they show signs of an infection, a fever, et cetera, they just take the first dose of the antibiotic and then go right away to the ER. We can remove his spleen. We can't open him up. He'll lose too much blood and we don't have any to give him. I'm a universal donor. That's insane. The surgery will take too long. Unless you have a better idea, I suggest you stop making excuses and get started. Also, you want to test her and make sure she doesn't have any communicable diseases. How does she know she doesn't? I mean, she might have gotten tested a month ago, but maybe now she has something. So like, it's ridiculous. Stay with me. And... Ava? Hey, Ava? Oh. Oh yeah, take off the mask while he's still open and cough inside his wound now that he doesn't have a spleen. That's gonna go well, there. sir. Did we do it? <laughs> yeah. And now I'm getting him even more sick. <laughs> the spleen might be some people's favorite organ, but check out my favorite organ as well as some of your favorite social media docs. Click here to check that out. And again, huge thanks to Arrow for sponsoring this video. As always, stay happy and healthy.